Hi everyone! So I am making this video sort of by request. So I have recently announced on YouTube that I am pregnant. I am three months pregnant with my second baby. Uh, we were trying to conceive for about three or four cycles until we actually did conceive. And so in this video, I am going to tell you what I did differently this cycle that likely or could have possibly contributed to actually getting pregnant. So if you've never been here before, my name is Susan. This is The Oslims. Thank you so much for joining me. This YouTube channel is all about information as well as my personal experiences with trying to conceive, fertility, pregnancy, and birth. So let's start with the very first thing that I did during the cycle that I conceived. So your cycle starts on the first day of your period. So I started doing this thing on the first day of my period during the cycle that we conceived. And this thing is rebounding, so basically jumping on a trampoline. This is something that I actually also did um, before my pregnancy with our first daughter. Um, I kind of heard about some of the benefits. Some of the benefits seem a little bit out there and a little bit crazy, um, but it's something that I did that could have possibly helped me get pregnant with our first daughter. So I thought I'd give it a go um, for this second pregnancy. So I didn't start doing it until the exact cycle that we got pregnant on. I started on cycle day one, so the first day of my period, and I actually only did it during my period. If I were to do it again, I might continue um, rebounding all the way through until I ovulated and then probably stop during the two week wait, just because I don't want to be bouncing around. I don't know if um, the egg is trying to implant. I just feel like there's a possibility that it could jolt it out of place or something. But let's get into what it actually is and why I decided to do it while I was on my period. So rebounding, as I said, is basically jumping up and down on a trampoline. The thing with rebounding as an exercise is that it is stimulating every single cell in your body. So you're jumping up and down um, as you go up, you're kind of accelerating um, and at the peak you have like zero gravity for a second and as you go down you're experiencing an increase in g-force and then you know you hit the bottom and you go back up and down and this continues this cycle continues so there's acceleration deceleration g-force uh, zero gravity, you're experiencing all of this and every single cell within your body is also experiencing this. I have made a completely separate video about rebounding and the possible benefits that it can have for your fertility, so I'm going to just put the link to that video in the description below so you can get into more detail about that. But basically what I was doing while I was rebounding dur during my period, what I was thinking in my head is that when you're on your period, your body is sort of excreting your uterine lining and everything that's not supposed to be inside of your uterus at that time. Your body is doing the best job that it can, but there is always the possibility that there is some sort of like leftover crud inside of there that's not completely coming out. So what I figured is that if I do this rebounding during my period, that it would help to stimulate my uterus and through this bouncing motion, it would help to sort of excrete any sort of excess matter that could be possibly still inside of my uterus. And at the time during your period, your cervix is open, whereas most of the other time, unless you are ovulating, your cervix is tightly closed to not let any bacteria in. So I thought that during my period would be the perfect time to try to help my body to release as much as it needed it to release, I suppose. I'm sorry if this is sounding gross at all. I don't feel like it's sounding gross, but I'm sure when I watch this back, I'm gonna be like, oh my God, why did I say all that? So that was my idea, that was my theory, that's what I did, and it was the cycle that I ended up getting pregnant on. So I didn't go crazy with it. I Like, if you bounce too much and you haven't been practicing, you haven't been doing it before, it kind of makes your head feel weird. So I wasn't doing it for long periods of time at all. I was just doing it for like, a few minutes, a couple of minutes, maybe a couple times a day, and that was it. They say that with rebounding, you can start to experience some of the benefits after doing it for just two minutes. 
So I did that from the day that my period started that cycle um, and ended when my period ended. I quit doing it after that. So then the second thing that I did on the cycle that we conceived um, that I had never done before ever was a Mayan self fertility massage. So I have also made a completely separate video on this. So I'm going to link down in the comments, in the description, sorry, below, I'm gonna link down that video as well. But this Mayan self massage, um, it's one type of Mayan massage. If you're gonna go to a Mayan massage practitioner, then they are definitely going to do like a more in-depth, professional sort of massage. But the massage that you can do at home is very, very simple, like you can do it within five minutes. It's nothing complicated, nothing major. Um, in the video, in the description, um, I'll show you exactly how to do the massage. So I don't need to show you that in this video here. Um, but yeah, it's very simple. It's not as intense, obviously, as getting a professional Mayan massage therapist to work on you. So that could be an option as well. But for me, I just did this self-massage. So the idea with the Mayan massage is that our uterus, our ovaries, our fallopian tubes, everything that's inside of us can move around, like including all of our organs. They can all move around a little bit. Um, I know when we look at diagrams and images of where all of our organs are, they always seem to be like perfectly placed, but in reality, it's not quite like that. It's actually very common for women to have like tilted uteruses, prolapsed uteruses, just anything that's like not exactly in center and perfectly in place. It's really common for women to have that. So with the Mayan fertility massage, what they're basically trying to achieve or what you are trying to achieve when you're doing this to yourself is basically to get your uterus in its optimal positioning. I should also note that before doing this, I had no idea if my uterus was in a good position or a bad position or what position it was in at all. Um, so I don't know if this had an effect on me, but it is the one thing that I did differently from any other cycle and it happened to be the cycle that we conceived on. So the third thing I did as we're kind of going throughout the days of my cycle um, is I was testing my luteinizing hormone and my estrogen. So to test both of these things, I use the Clear Blue Advanced ovulation kit. This is something I use to get pregnant with our first daughter. Um, and I have also used it maybe one or two other times during cycles when we did not conceive. So in all, I've bought maybe like four, two, three or four of these kits. And two of the times that I've used it, I've gotten pregnant. So a lot of you are probably testing your luteinizing hormone already using LH strips, and that's great. Um, for me, the LH strips on their own just never really seemed to work. Um, maybe my luteinizing hormone peak is just too short for me to like catch it in time. Um, but what I've found every single time that I have used the Clear Blue Advance Kit is that it will give me a reading and let me know that I, I actually am going to ovulate soon. Um, so I think the big thing for me is that this kit is also testing for estrogen which um, there could possibly other be other tests that do test for estrogen, but I have only found the Clear Blue Advanced Ovulation Kit to test for estrogen so far. I'm sure there are other ones out there. So because I, always have, I have difficulty with the LH strips, um, the test that also tests for estrogen seems to be way, way easier for me, way better for me. So your estrogen levels will rise before your LH peaks. Um, so it'll rise like I say I think they say like one to three days before your LH peaks your estrogen will begin to rise so if you can detect your estrogen rising which is what this uh, kit does for you then you have more days potentially 
three more days in which you can sort of baby make um, to get that sperm inside of you. The sperm's going to live for three to five days inside of your body. Um, so you can be having sex before your LH peak happens and before you ovulate and it just gives you a few more days in which you know that you are about to ovulate. So this has been extremely beneficial for me and super easy to use so it's a kit that I always talk about and it's one that if I was to try to get pregnant again, which I don't plan on it, I would definitely use this kit again. I would use it every single time. So I started using the Clear Blue Advanced kit a few days before I was going to ovulate. I think actually this time I was losing track of the days and so usually I would start using this kit like, I don't know, five days or more before, um, before I thought I was going to ovulate. But I lost track of days and so I ended up using it, well I ended up using it like two days before I ovulated. No wait, three days before my LH peak. So what happened was the first day that I used it, I got like just the blank, so the just the empty circle, which meant that nothing was rising. The very next day I used it, I got the smiley face or the flashing smiley face. I'm not sure which one they give you first now. I don't have the kit anymore. But I got the the one that was telling me that my estrogen was rising. And then the very next day after that, so day three of testing with this kit. Then I got the other smiley face that tells you now you're at your peak, your LH is peaked I guess. Um, so then after that, like a day after that, you're probably going to ovulate. So I really only had two days of positive readings and every other time that I've used this test I've gotten like four days. So I don't know if I tested too late or if, I don't know, this whole ovulation thing just happened really quickly this time. But we literally only had sex two days and we got pregnant. That might be too much information. The cycle before, okay now, now I'm just gonna give you more information. The cycle before we had baby danced five days in a row and didn't get pregnant that cycle. But it only takes one time. So the fourth thing that I did is again, something completely new that I had never done before. Um, I hadn't done it with my first pregnancy at all, and I had, hadn't done it with any of the other cycles when we were trying to conceive this time. And this is a product I still have the box for. I still have so much of this stuff left over. Um, so we used Preseed, or I used Preseed. So Preseed is not going to be useful for everyone. Um, basically, it's a lubricant that is sperm friendly, and it says that it is supposed to act like fertile cervical mucus. Maybe I'm just going to confirm what it says. So it says isotonic and pH balanced to mimic fertile fluids. Sperm moves freely through pre-seed. Most other lubricants limit sperm motility. So if you are using lubricants on like a usual basis, then it's definitely a good idea if you're trying to conceive to get a sperm friendly lubricant because as the box said, most other lubricants are going to sort of um, prevent the sperm from moving freely and making its way to your egg. And most lubricants don't have a certain pH balance um, so they're actually going to maybe kill off the sperm instead of helping it get to where it needs to be. But this is not just a product to use if you usually use lubricants because I didn't. Um, I would use this product if you feel like you don't have enough fertile cervical mucus. So if I were you, I would check my cervical mucus throughout my cycle. Um, even like over a period of cycles and see if you actually do have that fertile cervical mucus. For me, I never really felt like I had a problem with cervical mucus and I wouldn't necessarily say I have a problem, but as I started to learn more about cervical mucus and you know, you can sort of like test for ovulation through checking your cervical mucus. So I did research on that. I made a video on that. I can link it below for you guys as well in the description. So as I was making that video or after, or during, whatever, um, I decided that maybe I should be checking my own cervical mucus. 
And what I found is that before ovulation, during ovulation, I didn't have the type of cervical mucus that they say that you should have. And so this is why I thought it might be a good idea to use a product like Preseed. So for fertile cervical mucus, definitely check out the video that I'm gonna link in the description about fertile cervical mucus. Um, but what it should look like and what I was finding that I didn't have is a sort of stretchy egg white consistency. So they say that when you put it between your fingers, rub it a little bit and then stretch it out, that it should stretch for like an inch or more. So with that stretchy egg white lubricating cervical mucus, that fertile cervical mucus that they say you should have, um, the benefit to that, especially if you are trying to conceive, is that it's perfectly sort of formulated, created for sperm to move freely and to make their journey to the egg when you're trying to conceive. So the less your cervical mucus is like that, that egg white consistency, then potentially um, the less it's going to allow the sperm to move freely. So even though I thought that I didn't really have a problem with cervical mucus, um, I noticed that I didn't have that egg white consistency, so I figured it might be worth a try to, or yeah, it might be worth a try to try a product like this and see if it worked. So I literally only used this twice, those two times that I told you. And since then, I've never had to open the box again. So I have tons left in there. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. So the thing with Preseed, um, it is a lubricant, but if you take a look at the instructions on the box, you're not really supposed to use it the way that you would normally use lubricants. And that's because it comes with applicators. So this is three applicators here. It comes with a few more as well. I don't know how many, maybe it came with 12. I don't know, nine applicators it came with. So as you can see, these are a few inches long and here's the pre-seed. But basically the instructions tell you that you're supposed to insert this about one to two grams, which is, you know, this much. <laughs> and you're supposed to insert this basically as far as you can, as close as you can get it to your cervix. Um, so if you are using it like a regular lubricant, you don't want to be using very much, just a little bit, but if you're going to use it sort of the, I'd like to say proper way, or the way that they're instructing you to use it to really help that sperm flow to, you know, have better motility to get to the egg, um, then you are going to want to follow the instructions, and if you're using it more like externally, not completely externally, obviously, but if you're using it externally, then a tiny bit goes a long way, like you can use a drop. But I suggest, if you know that you have a little bit of an issue with cervical mucus, just use it the way that they tell you to use it, and that's how it's going to actually achieve the results it's supposed to achieve. So those are the four things that I did differently this cycle. I'm also going to give you some products, some nutrients that I take all of the time that I feel can help you conceive if you are not taking them right now. So these things are omega-3 oils, a multivitamin, and a vitamin D supplement. When it comes to the vitamin D supplement, I am not going to say that this is something that everybody should take because uh, I know a lot of people should take it, but it's really dependent on your situation. Actually, I have a completely separate video about vitamin D and how it can potentially help you with your trying to conceive journey. So I'm just gonna link that video down below as well um, because there is a lot that goes into deciding whether you should take vitamin D or not. So just watch that video instead of me trying to describe it in here. When it comes to a multivitamin and an omega-3 supplement, I really do believe that everybody should be taking them. Like I can't think of a situation in which you should not be taking them unless you have allergies to any of the ingredients that are inside of them. So the reason I recommend omega-3s, um, there's tons that it can do for your body, but when you're talking specifically about fertility and trying to conceive, um, it's really important to be getting healthy fats in your diet because your hormones are predominantly made up of fats and proteins. Um, so getting a healthy fat like an omega-3 is a great idea. 
So a lot of people say, well, why don't I just take, why don't I just eat more fish? Because fish oils are like an obvious source of omega-3. Um, a lot of the supplements are just called fish oil supplements instead of omega-3 supplements. So you could eat more fish, um, but the thing with eating fish is that it can contain other things like mercury because our water is not the cleanest. So there was a report on consumerlabs.com. I do have a separate video I could also comment down below. I might as well um, put in the description down below this other video about omega-3s and trying to conceive. Uh, but basically, Consumer Labs said that they tested a whole bunch of omega-3 supplements and all of them had like barely any mercury or anything that you should be concerned about. And they also said in that same very short article that there is a much higher chance of consuming mercury if you are eating the fish alone um, as opposed to taking a supplement. So this is why I prefer to take a supplement over eating a bunch of fish. And then when it comes to multivitamins, you know, do whatever research you can to pick out the best multivitamin for you. If you are trying to conceive, um, definitely take a prenatal multivitamin, that's always a good idea. The prenatal vitamins have more of the nutrients that we need when we are pregnant, but these nutrients are also very beneficial right before you come preg become pregnant, um, as well as when you're trying to conceive. So one of the nutrients that the prenatal vitamin will have more of compared to the multivitamin is folic acid or folate. And the thing with folate and folic acid is that we need it when we are pregnant in the very, very early stages. Um, it helps to prevent spina bifida in our babies. But the thing is, is that spina bifida is something that will develop before or can possibly develop before you even know that you're pregnant. So it's important to have this nutrient in our bodies before we even become pregnant. So start taking your prenatal vitamin as soon as you can, as soon as you're trying to conceive. It doesn't hurt to take the prenatal vitamin even if you're not trying to conceive. I guess I should correct that in that some prenatal vitamins also have higher levels of iron. Um, so if you already have high levels of iron and you're not trying to conceive, then maybe you just want to take a multivitamin instead of a prenatal vitamin. Okay, so the last things that I have promised to tell you guys about in this video is some herbs. Yes, I pronounce it with an H uh, because I am Canadian, not French Canadian. Um, so some herbs that I have been taking uh, during this cycle, sort of, or before this cycle. So the first one is ashwagandha. And this is something that when I am not pregnant, I take kind of on and off. Um, ashwa ashwagandha is a great adaptogen. It is a calming adaptogen. So adaptogens are herbs that will help you uh, better deal with stress. Um, so I take ashwagandha during periods of time when I feel more stressed out or whenever. Um, I do really think it's a great herb. Um, this is something that I did not take during my two-week wait, that is for sure, and potentially I might not have even taken it during my cycle, but this is a product that I have taken before conceiving this baby, this pregnancy, um, and so I'm sure that there's still like traces of it in my body or that my body's been affected by it in some way. So ashwagandha is great for helping your body to better deal with stress, so that is the reason for me taking it. Another herb that I had been taking for a period of time, quite a long time before this, uh, this cycle, before I got pregnant, um, is schizandra. So again, I definitely didn't take schizandra during my two-week wait this cycle, and I might not have even taken it um, during the cycle at all, even before the two-week wait. But it is a herb that I was taking for quite a long time, I think at least a hundred days in a row before we conceived. So it's something that was had had an effect on my body before we conceived. I have a separate video on schizandra. I might have a video on ashwagandha as well. So if I do, I'm gonna post again 
the links to those videos in the description below. But Shizandra does a ton of different things for you. My main purpose for taking Shizandra was actually to improve my skin. Um, but I was also taking it because I knew that it was supposed to provide a ton of other benefits as well, so I figured I might as well take it. And there is one like traditional way of taking it, which is to take it for a hundred days in a row. So that was what I was doing. Previous videos, I have mentioned other herbs to you guys like maca and vitex and probably a ton of other things. Uh, but I want to let you guys know that I have not taken those things any time near to conceiving this baby. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has provided you with at least a couple new things that you can potentially try this trying to conceive cycle. If you do find out you're pregnant, congratulations! I'm going to make a whole bunch more videos on pregnancy coming up right away because as I said, I'm pregnant now, so those are the type of things that I am researching now. But if you still have questions about trying to conceive, definitely check out my channel. I have tons of videos and I will probably continue to make more videos about fertility and trying to conceive as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all again very soon. Bye!